Hello. Hi. Hi, Paper Shiny. How's it going? This, honestly, I kid you not, it's like I created the slides a long time ago. I have not rehearsed this once. I have not. I actually had notes. I can't get the notes. This, I wanted to be passionate. I wanted to be exactly what I was feeling at the time. So we're going to see how this works. <laughs> So um, this is just like, you know, I like of all the many wrong images that you get in a, uh, in, uh, on our industry and stuff, you know, this is just another one. This guy actually has a website about how much uh, of a hacker he is. It's sort of sad, so, and the image is a little cropped, so I don't know if you can see the whole thing. But what's really about is this. See, there we go. There, there we go. This is all about, you know, how to channel your inner Harry Rollins. And people ask, you know, a lot of people, because it makes me feel really old, is saying, who is Henry Rollins? Which is sort of sad. It's like, uh, Henry Rollins is a awesome punk rock singer from Black Flag, from the Henry Rollins band. He is an artist. He is a writer. He is a poet. And for y'all to be able to sort of, you know, hopefully sync up with who he is, he's an actor. So hopefully you'll be able to at least see that. You'll be able to say, okay, now I know who he's talking about. Um, we like to ask for credentials of the speakers, you know, what gives you right. I don't, I'm not going to talk about how good I've done this or how good I've done that. It's not that kind of talk. It's like when you want to know about me right now, what you need to know is I was an idiot. All those, and these are some of the most embarrassing pictures I have ever made. It's like, you know, and I'm the, the, the person responsible for them. Uh, DEF CON 12, I had no clue what I was getting into. It was my first DEF CON. I had no idea what DEF CON was supposed to be. Uh, I was a big fanboy then, still fanboy now. And I just was an idiot. I was too busy trying to get pictures, too busy trying to be part of the scene and not trying to be part of the community. And so that's sort of what this talk is about. I love the look on Kevin Mendick's face because he's like, who the is this guy? It's like, so it's like, I mean, it just shows. It's like, I mean, but he, he still took the picture. He still tried to, you know, help out the weird people. So that's what uh, this talk is going to be a little bit about. Because right now, it's like, this is the awkward part because I need to actually read this. Because when I was doing research on this topic and I was uh, trying to get... Uh, talking about the industry and the scene, I came across this that Henry Rollins uh, wrote and put it on backstage at one of his concerts. Listen to the stage manager and get on stage when they tell you to. No one has time for your rock star BS. None of the techs backstage care if you're David Bowie or the milkman. When you act like a jerk, they are completely unimpressed with your infantile display, what you might think comes with your dubious status. They were here hours before you. Uh, building the stage will be here hours after you, leave, tearing it down. They should get your salary. You should get theirs. Amen. It's like, that's one of the things that I, I really appreciate. And I saw that because it got me to thinking about this industry and about security and what we do, because we know we help out people. But what about David Lee? Not David Lee Roth, David Lee. You might know David Lee? Police officer in Tampa driving his beat and stuff. You know, he's got an area that he cruises, notices a car that he's never seen in that area before, ran the plates, it was stolen. Had a fight with the suspect, almost got away twice, twice almost died, but he called him. Ted Bundy. We know Ted Bundy, don't we? Why don't we know the cop? You know why? He was doing his job. That's what he does. He didn't do it to get on Oprah. He didn't do it to get on Fox News. He didn't do it to get on, uh, famous on the internet and go to police conventions to talk about what a great job he did. He did his job. What about Rolf Mueller? What about uh, uh, Robert Roth and Rolf Mueller? They're driving their beat. They see this naked guy come up to them with a handcuff around them, screaming gibberish. Did they tase him? Did they just put him back in the thing because he was high on something? They listened to him. They then went back to the house he was talking about and arrested Jeffrey Dahmer. We know Jeffrey Dahmer. Two cops who did the job right. Why don't we hear about them? Because they were doing their job. They are doing what was needed to be done. What about Jonas Salk? Not the Jonas Brothers, you know, thank God. It's like, uh, but Jonas Salk, he cured polio. He got a little bit more attention, so, you know. I, I don't think he was trying to be a rock star, but he, he, he's, a, he's known in the, his industry. So it's like, that's what I was trying to think about. He said, you know, it's like how we need to start bringing back to the community because this is the way 
it looks right now. We've got the industry, the security industry. 90% of the people are in the industry. They go home, they work nine to five, they go home and they deal with the, um, what are they called again? Family. Yes. It's like, you know, it's like uh, they, they deal with their offspring units and, you know, they do stuff. I'm sure that you're supposed to be doing if you weren't a horrible father like me, but it's like, that's what goes on. It's just their job. It's a career. The internet wouldn't be running without them. It's like, there's nothing wrong with being a part of the industry. Unfortunately, 8% of us are in the community. That's you guys. We're here at the conferences. We're here sharing information. It's like we're trying to, to, to build blogs and you're on Twitter trying to uh, create dialogue. It's like you're doing research. You're speaking, hopefully, at conferences. You're, you're trying to be part of it. That's the community. And then that little pimp on the butt crack of it is the scene where we're talking about, hey, you know, let's get a can of spray paint, blue hair, and, you know, and, and party. And just be part of not what's really going on. Let's just talk at people not willing to listen to them and just be amazed at how wonderful we are. We need to stop that. We need to figure out how to get more people in the industry into the community and hopefully the scene will die off. So that's sort of what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to go in and talk about just everything bad about, you know, rock stars. Okay, it's not all about that. But we get to the point sometimes where we see the scene and we think, oh, that's pretty cool, you know? It's like, I'm, I'm really that uh, thing. The worst thing that you can actually do is actually start believing your own hype. It's like, I'll actually start believing this. And then, because when you start believing your own hype, you're gonna detach yourself. It's like, it's like, oh, I'm this person. No, you're not, you're part of the community. You should be part of the community. You should be engaging people not just talking to them. It's like, that's one of the things that we need to do. And that's one of the things that I miss from a lot of these conferences. Where it's like, where we stop, it's like, you know, you, a speaker comes up, and I've gone to a lot of conferences, and I see the speakers come up, they get up, they talk, they talk, they're gone. You don't see them the rest of the conference. It's like, it's part about the community, it's part about networking, it's part about questions. That's what we should be doing. Another thing that we need to understand is engage. It's like, uh, I, have to, I have to say straight out, it's like uh, Jericho did a great talk, uh, a great posting where he said, you know, question uh, people, question um, the speakers. Why, do they, why should they be there? Because you know what else that does? That makes sure that you understand that you're just not blindly accepting what they say. And when you don't blindly accept what they say, you're researching what they say. You're learning what they say and you're taking that and you're building on it that's what we need we need to start building that up it's like because if i'm not i was at one talk where a guy had taken a lot of the stuff that i talked about last year and he gave a presentation that was basically you know his version of my talk you know i thought about that freaking awesome he learned it's like he took it and he did it and he made it his own that is awesome that's engaging, that's what we're supposed to be doing here. It's like, and so you gotta get those people, it's like when you're challenging and we're growing, it's like that's building the community. That's what we're trying to get to. But another thing that we get is people thinking, you know, there we go, this is so awesome. There we go. We're cynical. We're a very cynical industry. I'm not paranoid. People are out to get me. I've got the firewall logs to show it. So we get to that cynical, and I've talked to so many people behind the scenes and stuff, you know, and they're trying to like, yeah, I've got some research, but I don't know how people are going to react to it, and I don't want them to, and I don't want to get dissed. It's like, I've had people say, I don't want to be on the watch list and stuff, you know, it's like what I say. It's like, we're because we're, we're too cynical sometimes. It's like we have to give people an understanding that, you know, mistakes happen. It's like, trust me, I've done like five already. It's like, you know, it happens. You move on. You learn from it. I am proud of every mistake I've ever made because I've learned from it and I've done better the next time. That is one of the things that happens. You've got to own it. It's like, if I'm going to own any success that I have, then that means I better be freaking owning every mistake that I've made as well. So you've got to get into that and you've got to understand that everybody feels uncomfortable. Everybody feels insecure. I feel self-conscious a lot of times. And so, you know, I just keep going and just say, you know, screw it. Because another good thing is I'm very self-delusional. 
which does help. And it's like, uh, you have to understand, don't let it stop you. You know what you know, you believe in it, share that information, be part of that change. It's like, I, I'm a high school dropout. He lived, he used to live behind a dumpster. Okay. It's like, I don't care. It's like, I would not be where I'm at if I let reality get in the way of me trying to accomplish something. Realistically, this whole thing is impossible. Being a hacker is thinking, you know, realistically, this is not supposed to happen. Let me put this jumper there anyway. That's hacking. That's what's part of being a hacker is about. Looking at something and saying, hey, I bet you I can make it do something else. I bet you I can change the reality just a little bit enough, you know, to advantage me. So we need to get there. We need to start understanding that you've got something to share. Share it. It's like you've got something that you're doing research on. Share it. Be part of it. One of the things is we're not getting to the point where we're sharing it. There's not really that many places. Guess what? Secure in, uh, secure, uh, secure.info is a list of all the conferences. It's like someone said there's too many conferences. No, not enough. We need to have so many freaking conferences going around everywhere that all the big names can just, you know, be all spread out and other people start having a chance to speak. I don't speak at B-sides anymore. It's like not because I don't support it. I want to hear from the locals. I will attend B-sides. I'll go to a panel maybe. I want to hear what you have to say. You've got research. You've got valuable information you can share. Get up here with me and speak it and share the information. That's what needs to happen. You've got passion. You're here in this heat dealing with all these crowds, dealing with all the little blinkies and all the Wi-Fi and all the other little drama that's going to be surrounding it. It's like you've got that passion. Do something with it. A lot of people don't have blog posting. That's the reason why I created Dissecting the Hack. Dissectingthehack.com is made for that. If you don't have a blog, I, I spend money on that every month. I have no advertisers. I have no revenue coming in from that. That is just a place for you to register and become a member and post what you want to post. It's like start sharing your information out there. It is a no flame zone for people to start acts, um, getting out there and trying to get their foot in the door about creating blog posts and start getting some information out there. You've got valuable information. Start sharing it. It's like, and it, it brings us to the whole thing about DEF CON. It's like in other conferences. It's like, uh, like Derby CON. This is, actually you really can't see it. It says, if you know something, share it. If you learn something, learn more. When you really know your stuff, teach it. That was a DEF CON ethos taught to me by Major Malfunction, Adam Laurie. It's like, that's not his actual picture, but if you Google him, you, you'll see that. It's like, I want to keep on the Rockstar theme. I showed up, DEF CON 12, looking like an idiot. I showed up, you know, clueless about what was going on. He was one of the guys that was like, oh my gosh, it's like, it's major malfunction, you know? Did he blow me off? Did he like freaking just write me off because of the way I looked or the way I acted? No, he talked to me. He engaged with me, he got me going to do more. FX, community, there's so many other guys and stuff, you know, that gave me a chance. And more importantly, they gave me a second chance. We made mistakes. It's like we learn from them, we contribute. I want to see more of you up here sharing this information. It's like sharing this passion. This is not a great career choice if you just want to do your job. You have to have passion. You have to want because the guys on the other side of the keyboard are having a blast. This is awesome amounts of fun to do wrong. Why aren't we doing it right and having this much fun? So please, it's like if you hear anything from this, it's just share that passion, share what you know, question, challenge the community. I love the badges this year. It's like because it gives me opportunities to go up to people. It's like, oh, do you have a contest badge? Do you have a speaker badge? And interact with people. That's what they're there for. 15,000 people at DEF CON. Oh my God, it's too big, it's too huge. 15,000 opportunities for you to meet somebody new. 15,000 opportunities for you to network and find a new friend that shares the same passion you have. That is an awesome opportunity as long as you don't waste it. 
This Def, I am always going to be a DEF CON fanboy because DEF CON created a family for me, created friends for me, and gave me that chance. So it's like, y'all need to use that chance. Y'all need to take it and start learning more from it and start sharing. Get that, you see a speaker who doesn't talk, you don't really agree with what he says, you don't agree with how it is? Go back and do some research, be up there next year showing your findings and showing the corrected way to do it. And then engage the person. I've been on panels talking for and against certain issues because I disagree with somebody. Challenge, engage. Be part of the community. The more we become part of the community, the less the industry gets. Uh, I mean, the bigger the industry gets and the less the scene uh, is there. So become part of that. Don't complain about it. That doesn't help anybody. It's like, be part of it, engage it. It's one of the reasons why I like doing the awkward hugs. Because I mean, how seriously can you take some guy who's gonna hug you awkwardly? It's like, you know, it's like, that makes me more approachable. That makes me, I'm always willing to be interrupted. It's like, I always want to be a part because I always want to be able to talk. Sorry, I had to interrupt you. I, I made it a little bit longer, so it would definitely be awkward. That's what it's about. It's like, I love, I love this community. I love these people. And I just want to see it better. And I'm not going to complain about it. I'm not going to try to tear it down. I'm going to try to build it. And that can't be done by me. It's like all I can do is speak, all I can do is rant, all I can do is ramble. It's gonna be done by you guys. Thinking about it, doing it, making it better. And I, and I mean it. It's like I love this community and I love you guys and I want to see it better. We can do better. So I hope y'all will be with me and hoping you'll get out there and you'll do that. Because remember one important thing, if this weed can eventually speak at DEF CON, so can you. There's some links. That's about it. <laughs>